I'm Dr. Charles Liu. I'm a professor of neurological surgery at the University of Southern California Keck School of Medicine. And I also serve as the director of the USC Epilepsy Care Consortium, a unique partnership of nine epilepsy centers in Southern California. Today, we're here to talk about VNS therapy with particular focus on the implantation procedure itself. VNS therapy has really become a very standard um, a way uh, we treat medically intractable epilepsy in, in select patients. It's been around a long time, and the idea is that the device is programmed by your epilepsy neurologist, and it delivers this uh, pulse stimulation through the uh, coils that are wrapped around the vagus nerve. In a um, certain number of patients, the uh, seizures are uh, completely controlled, but in a much larger number of patients, the seizures are reduced in its intensity, severity, as well as its number. In the management of epilepsy, uh, we think, uh, of course, in terms of um, patients, whether they have seizures or don't have seizures, and this idea is called seizure freedom. But in my view, very importantly, is the burden of the seizure on the particular patient. And uh, VNS um, therapy has been shown uh, through multiple studies to reduce the seizure burden in many of our patients. The vagus nerve uh, stimulation um, treatment involves a surgical procedure whereby a small pulse generator is implanted in the chest wall and the leads, these little coils, are actually wrapped around the nerve itself. So, you know, typically the uh, vagus nerve stimulator implantation procedure is um, very straightforward. It's uh, a procedure that has really been worked out uh, over many, 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 many years. It involves a small incision in the neck that is about a, slightly over an inch. We usually find a nice skin crease in the neck, a natural skin crease, so that we can make the incision in that crease so that cosmetically it heals up very nicely and is very acceptable. The second incision is actually made right in the pectoral region, in the area of the chest wall. And the pulse generators now, the current modern versions, are really quite small. And so the incision does not have to be very big at all in order for us to insert the device. So everything sits under the skin and nobody sees anything other than, if you look really closely, maybe a couple of small lines where the incisions were made. The procedure to implant the device is uh, one that's been well worked out and um, the safety of it is well established. It is an outpatient procedure. In other words, the patient comes in on the day of the operation and they expect to go home uh, on the same day. The actual operation itself takes between one to two hours. The um, procedure is done under general anesthesia. The infection rate uh, is uh, quite low. Um, we give patients um, antibiotics uh, during the operation. We call it perioperative antibiotics. I always tell people to, you know, it's general anesthesia, major surgery, so plan on taking some time. And, you know, if you're working or going to school, you might try to arrange for the surgery to be at a convenient time. It is an elective operation, so you do have the luxury of planning it. What I've been told by my patients is that, you know, after a couple of days, they start getting back to doing what they're normally doing because, um, you know, again, it's well, well tolerated. We uh, tell patients not to pick up heavy objects and, you know, I think of a carton of milk, anything more than that. Try not to do that because um, there are uh, stitches that the uh, incisions have been closed with that you want to protect at least for a little while. There's not a huge amount of pain because the procedure is generally not one of the painful procedures out there. And um, of course, uh, patients usually sent home with some pain medications to, you know, to manage this, the, the pain around the procedure. For patients that have received a uh, new implant, um, they usually come and see me in two weeks um, for uh, a standard post-operative follow-up where I look at the wound to make sure it's healing nicely and there's no issues at all. In addition to that, the uh, patients will follow up with their epileptologists, who are their 
doctors that will program the device and also look at their medications now because the device is now added to the armamentarium of management uh, tools to manage their seizures. In thinking about the side effects of VNS therapy, you know, there is one set of uh, risks, if you will, of the actual implantation procedure. The side effects can be managed by programming the device and the epileptologist can adjust these devices to minimize the side effects and maximize the benefits.